What about the psalmization? When did you get into that? Uh, at the beginning with Diego Fratelli, because in his course, that was like theory and solfeggio, but ancient theory, theory and solfeggio, <laughs> so psalmization and white mention notation, the first, the first topic of this course was psalmization. So uh -huh. the, all the students of this course started learning music with solmization. So using the Wedonian hand that I have here in right. my beautiful glove <laughs> for with the syllables that is useful. Because there is a there is a video on YouTube where people um, uh, draw the uh, the scenes of, uh, yeah. of solmization on their hands. But yeah. in this way with the glove and colors, in my opinion, is better and in this way you don't have to wash every time your hand. <laughs> That's so interesting, and and that's I, I like that it's connected, you know, psalmization and partimento. They're there. It's not like two different camps or two different worlds. They're actually part of the same world. Exactly, because psalmization is not uh, a topic that is separated from other from others. Psalmization is the a way of think music. So the way used for thinking music by old masters. Right. For example, uh, if um, Paisiello or another musician of this period um, read uh, a semitone, okay, he would read mi fa. If the semitone is, for example, F sharp and G, Paisiello would read mi fa, not F sharp and G. Mm. So if we enter the way of thinking of old master it's easier for us today understand understanding some aspects that in music are different right from our conception conception of music okay. now wait Rick, ricardo so i know in italy everyone today learns what they call fixed do right so c the note c is do right always like like the french system essentially and that's maybe more for most right. of europe that's the case right now somebody who maybe was raised on fixed o would say is it really easier because why don't i just you know i just use the note names and why do i have to worry about hexachords and mutating and all of that so what would you say to someone who thinks it's actually harder to use the guidonian hand and hexachords uh the reason is the point of view. For example, if you are reading solfeggio or you are reading with solfeggio, for example, um, a prelude of Chopin, in this case, it's better use the modern system. But if you know some musician, you can read some aspects of these preludes, some passages, some chromatics in the way that was at the origin of this chromaticism. So th there are a lot of reasons. For example, in this case, we have uh, modern music, Chopin thinking about the age of tonization, because mm. Chopin is of the 19th century, tonization was used in the 17th, in the 16th, 17th, 18th right. century in the Renaissance and the Baroque. But if we find the way for reading chromaticism in another way, we can find the same principles in modern music, so also in Chopin. But if we um, are reading, for example, uh, a Bicinio or a Mass or a Motetto, a motet of the um, 16th century, the problem of reading with modern, with modern names of the notes, with the modern system, is that we don't have the same eyes of the composers. So some passages that can sound strange for us or some alterations, flats or shafts that are not written, it's difficult for us to find them. Right. And also thinking with tonization is useful for singers because if you, if you focus on the position of the semitone because the tonization is based on the mi and fa, that is the semitone, is easier for the singer have and keep the right intonation. So right. these are two of the 
most important reason. Now, you have a slide here on Giulio Cesare. Shall we, shall we put that up? Let's see here. Okay. So this is, uh, this is the gamut, right? Oh, Giulio, Giulio Cesare. Giulio Cesare, Cesare Marinelli. I just butchered exactly. that. So Giulio Cesare. Okay, thank you. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Giulio Cesare Marinelli. Oh, no problem, no problem. Giulio, Giulio Cesare, the, that is not the emperor of Romans. <laughs> this is becoming Roman, a recurring no. theme. All right. <laughs> of Romans, right? Giulio Cesare Marinelli wrote uh, an interesting book whose name is La Via Retta della Voce Corale, that is in English, the right way of choral voice, that, is, that are instructions for singers, okay, for singers of canto fermo, so the Gregorian chant in the Renaissance, or in this case, in the late, in the early Baroque, because this book has been written at the, at the end of the 17th century. And the picture you can see on this slide is what I call the grid scale plus the little scale. So as you can see, we have 10 lines, 10 horizontal lines, and we have at the, at the left an ascending line with letters, starting from the bottom with gamma, or G in this case, because Marinelli doesn't use gamma for his way of teaching, that, goes, that, that go up to EE. -E. This was the system with letters that is not American or English. These letters, mm. the musical system with letters, has been invented by Boezio when he transposed the Greek names of the proportion of music with, on a monochord, and the letters was the point in the monochord. As today you write, uh, for, for example, you draw a, tra um, a square, and you put A, B, C, and D. Mm. So this letter, the origin of this letter are the point of the monochord. And then for knowing where there is the position of all the semitones, as in the right, we have seven scales, ut, re, mi, fa, sol, la, that are hexachords, okay? That are um, one, uh, uh, one after the previous, in this way, we can build a scale from the lower G to the upper EE. -E. Mm. Okay, now I show you at the board how we can build this system and how it is useful and how actually summation is not summation with six syllables is not something so difficult. Okay. So the summation system is based first of all on what. We, I call personally the grid scale, that it is the big scale, because we have 20 letters from mm, gamma, wow. that is the lower, lower letter. And when today you, we say, uh, or we say this in, 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 in Italy, don't, I don't know if in English there is a similar term, for example, uh, a gam of, uh, of lights, a gam of colors, Oh okay. right, a gamut. That yeah, yeah, indicates. yes, exactly. It's like a, yeah. it's like a. It comes, whole... it, yeah. it comes from this, from this point, the gamma, right. ut, that is the origin of all the system, because the letter at the bottom, the origin is gamma. So if you think a monochord, for example, gamma is the chord. So sorry, <laughs> the string, the yeah. chord in English is another thing. Yeah, the yeah. String, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The, st the, st the string um, played without touching the string in any point. Okay. Okay, so we have gamma, then the next step is A or A mm -hmm. in English, then B, C, D, E, F, and then again we start with G, then A, we use um, lowercase letters for making a distinction a distinction between the lower system so that's it, interesting so historically the C. scale starts with g then right the scale starts with g yes but but because in the greek system the lower the lower step was the pros, proslambano menos and it was a thinking the proportion and the semitone 
So because A is the first proportion, so the first touch of the monochord, gamma is the string without touch, touching the first point. Okay. okay. So imagine a violin. Imagine a violin. Your first finger is A. Mm. Without finger, it's G. if you play the string, the, the string without finger, you have gamma, not G, but gamma. Oh, I see, gamma, okay. So, yeah, because gamma doesn't have an, its own pitch. Gamma could, can be any kind of pitch. It depends your monochord mm. uh, from the, the, the frequency of your monochord. Oh, now, that's so have cool. This system, A, B again, C, D, E, F, G, and then again, but I don't have <laughs> enough space, Not enough space. On, on my board. So what happens now? It happens that on this point, on the globe, on the Guadagnan globe, where I have gamma, I have ut. That is the first syllable of our first hexachord. And so for that I write here ut, gamma ut, the origin of all the music. Then we have a, a, re, b, b, mi, c, fa, di, sol, i, la. And our hexachord is finished, so I cannot go a again, mm. because the hexachord finishes at la. So, because of this position of the wood near the gamma, on the gamma, we have the B that is me. So we have what we call B duro, hard B. Great. And the origin of the of this hexachord or of his name, hard hexachord or hexachordum duro, durum, is thanks to this B, the B durum. Okay. okay. And then if we start another hexachord from C, C, we have C, Fa, Ut, D, Sol, Re, I, La, Mi, F, Fa, G, Sol, and A, La. Okay. And then we, if we start another hexachord from F, we have F, Fa, Ut, G, Sol, Re, A, La, Mi, B, Fa, C, Sol, and D, La. And if we read horizontally, okay, we can say that we have this B as B, Fa, that will become the flat, the B flat, B, Fa. And at this point, we have the B, Mi. That is the natural B in modern conception, yep. in modern notes, if you want to make a comparison. And this three hexachord can be replied again, and then we can add another hexachord. Mm. Now, for example, let's, let's write only the third one. G, Sol, Re, Ut. Another mm. time the, the um, hard hexachord. A, La, Mi, Re, B, Fa, Mi. C, Sol, Fa, D, La, Sol, E, La. For that, if we read a Renaissance or a Baroque music treatise, we find the, note, the name of the notes like G or G in English, Sol, Re, Ut. Because in this case, G is Sol, so the fifth degree mm -hmm. of the natural hexachord. Mm. C, Ut, G, Sol. It is Re, so the second degree of the soft hexachord with mm -hmm. the B flat, because F, Ut, uh, G, Re. And we have the Ut in G, on G, because this is the first degree of the hard hexachord, G, Ut. So the name of the notes, the ancient name, are um, contextualized in this system. And, and this system is what we can see in the picture of Marnelli, you yeah. you show before, and if we take this system and we transfer it on our hand, we obtain 
the Guidonian the hand. hand. Yeah. Exactly. So the Guidonian hand is exactly this system, but transposed in a way that if you memorize with your mind when you are singing in the chorus or in other occasions, you can watch your hand and you, you don't need to have a table or a piece of paper with this picture. Wow. So this is the practical way of the Guidonian hand. All this or what we ought what we what, what you can see completely in the picture of Marinelli, you have on your hands. But if you think in the ancient period, the use uh, people uh, did of the hand was really bigger than what we do today. For example, we we mm, we, we enumerate eggs in twelve, twelve and twelve. Do right. you know the reason of this? I have because no idea. You, you, well, because while you, while you, the seller with the right hand, take the eggs and pass the eggs. And with the left hand, he enumerates these eggs. And if you look at, the, at your phalanges, and phalanges only of the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth finger, you touch these phalanges with your thumb, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine, nine, eleven, and twelve. Wow. So you have twelve phalanges. Yeah. In this way, the use of the hand was really spread in in, um, in the market for for the numeration of eggs or for example in the astronomy. There are a lot of other hands or in math, mathematics, for doing, for doing uh, calculations, right. and also in music. So we have these hands that is important for music, but in the Renaissance, in the Middle Age, in the late Middle Age, and in the Renaissance, the use of the hands was for a lot, hmm. a lot of things, not only for music. Right, that's brilliant. Uh, that's this so, is the origin. So that's so fascinating. Okay, now... One thing that I think really, really, because I've some people have said to me, this is movable though, like Kodai system. And then, I, I, but really, the the key to this is the the me and the fa. I mean, that really is the key. I mean, that's the whole reason why we have uh, the the hexachords. And let me just pull up the the slide on the power of fa and me here. Yeah. So the, between the fa and the me. There is a magnetism, something really strong. We will see um, soon in the uh, appartimento that if you have a me, this voice wants to go to the fa, and if you want, if you have a fa in a voice in a melody, this voice wants to go to the me. So uh, imagine the resolution of uh, a seven dominant chord. You have, for example, C, E, G, and B flat. Mm -hmm. Now, because, but we'll talk soon about this topic, because the B-flat is Fa in the yep. thinking visualization, and the E is Mi, the E wants to go to the F, and the B-flat wants to go down to the A. Right. So, this is the correct and the proper resolution of this chord. If we think in modern harmony, we can say, okay, fifth degree with the minor seven, and first degree. But if we think in the old with the old system, we have mi fa and fa mi. Yes. In this way. 